Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to respawn the player in a 2D platformer game in Unity. Uh, I've been working on this game in Unity, this platformer game, and I can move around the scene, I can jump from one platform to another, but as soon as I fall off a platform, that's it. Uh, I can't get back onto the platforms again and continue the game. I can't respawn. I can still move around left and right, uh, but the player is basically just continuously just falling uh, through space. So what I want to do is have, uh, once the player falls off a platform, um, shortly after that, I want the player to respawn back to the very first platform that uh, started on. So what we'll need to do is add some collision detection to the game. So we can set up an empty object below the scene uh, that's going to act as a fall detector. And when the player f goes through that fall, fall detector or hits it, uh, a collision is going to be detected. And when that happens, the player will respawn back to the starting point. So we'll need to write some code to detect that collision. But uh, what we'll need to do first is set up something that can be used to detect when the player has fallen off the platforms. So what I'm going to do is in the hierarchy here, create an empty object. So right click, create empty. And I'm going to call this empty object fall detector. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just position it using the move tool. Oops, I'm going to position that below the player. And I'm going to add a collider. So I'll go add component, uh, physics 2D, and I'm going to use a box collider 2D for this. I'm going to edit this collider. And I'm going to just drag the edges out so it's nice and wide, like that. And uh, if this was a small scene uh, and the player couldn't move too far left and right, then what you could do is just drag out the collider to the width of the scene, basically. So no matter where the player is in the scene, uh, when they fall, they're going to touch this collider and then respawn. But uh, my scene is quite wide and I'm going to keep adding more and more to the scene. So what I'll do instead is with code, I'll just make this collider move left and right with the player. So wherever the player moves, the collider is going to be following uh, underneath the, the scene there. Okay, so we'll look at how to do that a little bit later. So I don't need the collider to really be that big uh, if I'm going to make it move underneath the player. So about that size should do. Okay, what I'll also need to do is tick this box here where it says is trigger. And what that means is instead of the player falling and landing on this collider or hitbox, uh, it's going to be able to pass through it. And then we'll be able to detect that collision. We'll be able to detect when the player has passed through the collider or entered the collider. Okay, uh, next thing we'll need to do is we need to tag this collider uh, because in this scene what we're going to do what i'm going to show you how to do later is how to detect when the player has uh, hit things like spikes so we can uh, take off health or uh, reduce the score or when the player has collected um, different objects like crystals uh, or maybe when the player is touching the ladder uh, or the box or a checkpoint and that kind of thing so we're going to have to detect different types of collision or collision with different types of objects and we want to distinguish this uh, fall detector from other objects that the player might be able to collide with. So what we'll do is create tags. So we can tag different objects and when the player collides with an object, we can just check what uh, tag that object has. So if you select the fall detector, you can go to tag and then uh, from that drop down list, click add tag. I'm going to create a new tag and I'm going to call this tag fall detector and a tag can be applied to more than just one object as well. So I'm going to save that tag. And once I've added that to my list of tags, I just need to go back to the fall detector object and apply that. So I need to select that tag. So now it's tagged fall detector. Okay. So that's all that we need to do to set up the scene. Now we need to uh, add some code. So 
we're going to go into the player controller script, which is attached to the player. All right, so this is the code that's controlling all the, the movement of the player and the animations for the player. And what I'm going to do is I need to create two variables, two new variables. So public vector three respawn point. And actually this can be a private variable. So private vector three respawn point, and then a public variable, public game object full detector. So we'll call that one. Okay, so this first variable here, respawn point, that's going to uh, basically record the position of where the player starts off in the game. So if the player dies, they'll respawn back to that position. So we'll use this to just store the position of where we want the player to to um, respawn to. The second variable here is going to uh, link this script to the fall detector that's in the scene so that we can track it or so that we can uh, basically um, change its position to follow the player on the X axis. So if the player moves left and right, then the fall detector will move left and right with it. So we'll need those two variables. Okay, in the start method here, what we'll need to do is just specify the position of the respawn point at the start of the game. So to do that, say respawn point equals transform dot position. And because this start method only runs at the start of the game before the very first frame update, what's going to happen is the uh, respawn point variable is going to store the position of the player, which this script is attached to, um, before the first frame. So basically wherever the player is at the very start of the game, that position is going to be stored in this variable. And then we can use that later to uh, when the player falls to respawn the player back to that position. Okay, so going down to the uh, update method, what I'm going to do is add a line of code here that's going to be used to move the fall detector and um, it basically its position will match the position of the player on the X axis. So we'll do that by saying fall detector equals, oh, sorry, fall detector dot transform dot position equals new vector two. Okay, so the position of the fall detector is going to be set to transform dot position dot x. So that's the player's position on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, it's not going to change at all. It's going to stay where it, wherever it is on the y-axis. Okay, and just end that line with a semicolon. Okay, so the fall detector's position is going to be changed. Uh, we're going to use a new vector two here. This is going to be the x coordinate of the fall detector, and this is going to be the y coordinate of the fall detector. The x coordinate will be the position of what this script is attached to, which is the player object. Okay, so it's going to follow the player on the x axis, but on the y axis, it's just going to keep its current position. So it's not going to move up or down with the player. We wouldn't want that to happen because if the player falls, then the fall detector would be falling as well below the player and the player would never actually hit the fall detector. So we don't want that. Okay, oops, just don't need two semicolons there. All right, now to get this collision detection working, we're going to need to create a new method. And this method is called on trigger enter 2D. And it's used to detect a collision when one object enters another object's collider. Okay, so to do that, we'll type in below the update method, void on trigger enter 2D. Okay, and we can just double click that to uh, auto complete that. So we've got a new method here called on trigger enter 2D. And then in the parentheses here, we'll see collider 2D collision. Okay, so what this is going to do is um, it, this, this method is going to be called whenever a collision is detected, whenever uh, 
the player, which this script is attached to, has entered another collider. And we're going to refer to that other collider as collision. So then we can just check if that other object tag is the fall detector, if it's tagged fall detector, and if so, change the position of the player back to the respawn point. So this method is going to run whenever uh, the, the player enters the collider of another object. And so now what we need to do is just check if the tag of that other object is equal to full detector. So if collision.tag equals full detector, transform.position, so this is the position of the player, set that to the respawn point. And remember the respawn point was initialized up here at the start of the game to the initial position of the player. Okay, so there are a few different types of methods for collision. Um, there's, um, we can detect collision when one object enters a collider of another object or when it's um, staying inside the collider of another object or when it's left the collider of another object. Okay, so there's a few different types of collision that we can detect. In this case, we want to detect when the player is entering the fall detector or passing through it. And when that happens, uh, we'll check whether that other object that we've collided with, whether it uh, is tagged fall detector. And if so, that means that the player has hit the fall detector below the scene. And so we'll change its position to the respawn point. That's basically how it works. So you can save that script and then go back to Unity. Okay, so what we'll need to do first before we can run the game is we'll need to go to the player object and scroll down in the inspector panel to where the script is attached to the player object and that public game object variable that was called fall detector now needs to be linked to the actual fall detector. So you can just click and drag in one go the fall detector object onto that box there. All right, so now this variable fall detector, this variable here, fall detector, is now linked to this object here. All right, let's run the game. All right, now if I play off this, fall off this platform, you can see straight away I respawn. And if I move further along the scene, past the point of where that fall detector originally was, I still respawn, okay? Because the, the fall detector is moving underneath the, the player uh, following it on the x-axis. All right, so that's it. Um, you could just improve that a little bit just by maybe uh, changing the position on the y-axis of the fall detector if the, if the player is respawning too quickly. So you can play around with that. Um, and the next video, we'll look at how to add checkpoints. So once the player has made a bit of progress in this scene, rather than respawning all the way back to the start if they die, they can respawn back to a checkpoint. So we'll look at how to do that in the next video. That's it for this video though. Thanks for watching.